I'm Dr. Karen Salt, and I would like to thank all of you for um, spending some time with me today um, and joining to talk about uh, a whole range of things, actually. Um, most significantly, talking about what the Commonwealth is, um, what your relationship might be to it, um, what you might be able to do within it, and, um, and I think more importantly, what it might mean to actually think differently about the Commonwealth. Um, so before I get started um, and, uh, and move through um, a whole range of different um, issues, I'm gonna give, tell you just a little bit about myself. So as I mentioned, I'm Dr. Karen Salt. Um, I work uh, presently at the University of Nottingham um, and I also direct a place called the Center for Research in Race and Rights. And one of the things that has been um, of significant interest to me um, throughout my career um, in, in other sectors as well is really thinking about how does difference inform decision making? Um, how is essentially power distributed amongst groups? And if we wanted to imagine a different kind of future, what do we need to put in place in terms of our governance structures to enable that to happen? Um, or what new governance structures do we need? Do we need to give more power to the people? Do we need to create new systems and new structures? Um, and do we need to sometimes demand, dismantle some systems of difference that might keep certain groups from being able to um, actualize the power that they've got? So I work with organizations. I work with a lot of institutions. I do a lot of historical analysis um, and discourse analysis. Um, I look at a whole range of issues and topics uh, because I'm really, at the end of the day, um, not just interested in learning about these things, but I'm interested in sort of transforming societies. Um, but listening to the people about how they might want to do that um, and what that might entail. So <clears throat> I've come to uh, the Queen's Young Leaders really as I think um, a conduit to some of this history. And as a researcher um, and an advocate um, and a consultant um, who is really quite interested in trying to both um, think about the world and our histories and our legacies, but also work together proactively with all sorts of people to, um, to reimagine what that world might need in it to, to really be an, an equal place for everybody. So it's really about transforming um, our current structures, um, supporting maybe some of our structures, um, enabling others uh, so that we can really have uh, a just and equitable society. Um, that's a tall order in some places uh, because of a whole range of different issues that might make it quite difficult for different sets of people to even come together, much less be able to um, collectively organize themselves uh, and enact change. Um, but I'm optimistic about our futures. Um, and I think that's the only way to be um, if we really want to be able to have a next day for any of us, right? Um, and I would imagine from all of my interactions with people in the Queen's Young Leaders, is that that's probably what galvanizes so many of you um, is that you are you are leaders in your various regions and your various areas where you live um, but you're also folks who are committed to being on the front line and to demanding certain sets of changes um, to helping others to imagining a different society whether or not it's around um, you know gender dynamics or politics or poverty or food insecurities, um, or, or even, you know, electricity um, or, uh, or power um, in terms of um, actual thinking about, you know, power coming and, and creating new ways of, of people getting uh, um, electricity where they live. I mean, I've seen these projects that people have had, so I can, I know without a doubt that if you are a Queen's Young Leader um, and you are a person who um, even has attempted to even apply for the Queen's Young Leaders, um, you will be uh, an, an individual who is grappling with these issues. So um, let's sit at the table essentially for a little bit and think about some of this. Um, now, I think one of the reasons to, to think about the Commonwealth, <clears throat> it's not just an exercise, 
but I think it's worth noting um, that um, this particular uh, award that you have um, received um, and those of you who um, have been become runners up in it um, actually has uh, an affiliated society or affiliated organization that's a part of it. <clears throat> and so when you're interacting both with the, the Queen's um, you know, Jubilee Foundation and the Trust, um, and when you're thinking about what does that mean to have comic relief or the Royal Commonwealth Society or leading change, there's a lot of players that are around all of this. And I think it's worth thinking through, at least when we're trying to starting to think about a kind of commons, you know, what do we, what do we all share and have in common with each other? And how are we forming a kind of relationship that is a kind of new commons, right? We go back to a kind of earlier notion of a, of a commons in terms of coming together between in a space that has um, you know, free aspects to it and individuals can come in and share resources, um, bring particular things that they may have to that particular space. It's not a space kind of owned by anyone, right? These are sort of much older notions um, of, of a commons. Um, and you can see aspects of thinking about that gathering in terms that we have now when we, when we talk about community um, uh, and also probably to a certain extent when we talk about a commonwealth um, uh, in terms of this sort of gathering of, of, of a, particular set, um, a particular space. Now, I know that you know, um, and if you don't know, I'll just kind of remind you just a little bit um, that uh, our notion of something like the commonwealth um, comes from uh, a particular um, history, right? It, it actually has, has come to us meaning um, a particular set of things. So for example, one of the things that we know um, quite importantly about the Commonwealth um, in its current iteration, right? In its current iteration is that it's had different sorts of lives. Um, it's had a, it's had a life as as a kind of um, organization uh, that was directly related to uh, particular special countries, um, and those special countries then had um, a particular designation. Uh, it's moved away from that sort of um, articulation for those special countries um, to move into being um, a space that recognized individuals, um, individual uh, colonies or areas who were part of the former British Empire um, and might have uh, the queen as a symbolic head of state. Um, it's also now moved and morphed into becoming um, a space where people can actually apply to be a part of the Commonwealth um, and not necessarily have any relationship um, as a colonial entity um, with, it, with either England or the British Empire. Um, and so what you've got is you've got now this much larger kind of voluntary association uh, with 52 sovereign states or independent or recognized entities um, that come together. Um, and that is a really interesting group. Um, it's a group that essentially uh, doesn't really set laws exactly, right? Um, it doesn't really have any kind of... Um, formal uh, sort of structure like you would imagine for the, something like the UN um, in terms of um, it, you know binding laws and, and, and etc but it works together um, and people really start to think through um, within the Commonwealth um, about various ways um, of essentially uh, trying to advance um, economies trying to um, discuss and think about ideas, um, what principles and values. There are charters, uh, there are networks of various different um, civil society and cultural groups, um, and there is a, there's an entire way of kind of supporting and enabling um, uh, development, democracy, and, and various, uh, various things of this nature. Um, and, and, and quite significantly, the Commonwealth is really quite uh, intrigued and focused on young people um, and thinking about um, their voices. Um, so in some ways, there is a real strong understanding of why um, you are in existence as, um, as, as something that the Commonwealth would be interested in, right? Um, and, and I think 
when we start to think about the training and support um, and um, the the sort of enabling that the Commonwealth offers as a sort of as a sort of network and space um, for these sets of exchanges, you really start to think that wow, this is actually a very productive space, um, even though it has a very long history. And I'm going to want you to think of a little bit about the history of the Commonwealth because even though it, it, it sounds like this sort of very productive, um, inclusive space where people are strengthening governance and thinking about um, threats to climate change and, and inequality, it's had a history, um, at least from a kind of colonial and imperial standpoint, where those sorts of actions may not have always been at the forefront of, 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 of exchanges, right? Um, so, I mean, we would, we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that the empire also at a particular period of time um, enabled and supported Atlantic racial slavery. Um, we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that at a particular period of time, um, the empire uh, and the um, 